14 years, um, but I'm new to San Diego State. I started in February. And um, so I've learned a lot um, and I've been spending most of my time since starting um, online. So hopefully I'm comfortable enough with that that I can show you the different, um, the different tools that will be useful and how to navigate them. Um, but please, please ask me questions. You can, um, you can raise your hand, your virtual hand or your real hand. Um, you can put it in the chat. You can unmute yourself and just ask. It's okay in this context to interrupt me. I'd much rather have a conversation. Um, and I'm gonna try and keep my chat window open even when I share my screen, which I'll do in just a second. Um, but first, let me ask you all um, if you'll use either like the thumbs up or in the participants menu, the yes or the no, have any of you um, been to the library or um, either physically or online, have you used it before? I'm just gonna, I see a not yet and I see a yes, cool, okay. Some more not yet. Notice I'm saying not yet because we're going to do that today. Um, so let me share my screen and everybody can hear me okay. I sometimes think, thank you for nodding. <laughs> sometimes I think I talk kind of loud when I get into these um, situations. So let's see. I'm going to share my desktop. Um, and here we go. So can you all see my website here or our website? Yes. Okay. Cool, and let me open up my chat. So I have it here. Okay. Ah, thank you, Erin, for monitoring the chat. Okay, so I'm actually gonna start here. So you should be seeing a red and white slide that says library research. Um, and I'm gonna hope not to spend too much time on the slides because um, I wanna save some time for searching because I get the impression that you all have some of your terminology, some of your topics. Um, and I definitely want to kind of help you get a jump start on that. So I already told you who I am. I'm part of the research instruction and outreach unit of the library. Um, so we're the ones who do instruction like I'm doing today. Um, we sometimes put on events. Um, we pester you to try and kind of come and, and build a relationship with the library um, because we have not only so many resources, but we're just, um, we're really invested in your success from when you start to when you graduate and even beyond. Um, so we really encourage you to come see us. And um, as I said, I'm new. So I actually am located up in Orange County. I'm not in San Diego because I was about to move, um, but then things happened. So here we are. Um, and I was gonna ask you all if you're comfortable sharing, if you'd put into the chat um, where in the world you are located. Um, Cause I always kind of like to know that. Um, and then over on the right, there's a little link that says find a librarian. And that's so I remember to tell you that you have subject specific um, librarians at SDSU. So these are specialists who um, may have an undergraduate or graduate degree in, in that field like psychology or education um, or engineering. And in addition to their master's in library science. And so as you progress in your university career and you're doing more advanced research, they are an amazing tool for you because they know all the best resources. Um, they know your research methodologies, which are different from subject to subject. Um, so just know that we're there where many of us are highly specialized um, and we wanna help. Okay, so. Let me open this up and I'm seeing lots of people in San Diego. Oh, and in La Mesa, one of my coworkers is in there. Los Angeles, excellent, just to the north of me. Oh, okay, so Orange County, whoop, whoop. Um, I hope you are safe from fires, um, Nicole and Cameron, because I know it was a little hairy around here earlier this week. Um, so this is some of what I'd like to try and accomplish today, but really I want to accomplish what is most helpful for you. So please do ask. If you think of a question while I'm talking, just jot it down um, and, and we'll get to that. Um, so yeah, we're gonna look at the library, look at some resources and practice some searching. Um, okay. So this is a little slide so I can just tell you we have different kinds of things. We have obviously a physical structure, a building, which once we're back on campus has tons of study space. Um, that you can either book um, 
for a group or just for scum for serve or just use on your own lots of places to plug in um, coffee a 24 7 area where you can you can do research and use computers all times um, once we're back on campus um, and then just all the time whether we're remote or on campus things like the math stats learning center the writing center um, access to streaming media uh, like movies music um, both kind of of more entertainment value, but also of academic research value. Um, we have a variety of databases for that. And then um, the tried and true journals uh, and, and special subject databases, depending on what kind of research you're doing. And I think the, the thing that really ties all those things together are the people, you know, so we know how to use these resources. Um, many of us, uh, have have experience in your particular subject area and so we can kind of put all that knowledge together um, to save you a bit of frustration at the outset of your your research endeavors because um, research can often be like a hard thing to start like anything and then requires just a lot of fine tuning um, okay so speaking of fine tuning, research can sometimes feel like a bit of a maze. Um, and you maybe have an idea in your head of this thing you want to find out or this, this argument you want to put forth. Um, so you have a plan and you get started and maybe it goes well right out of the gate, um, maybe not. And so uh, you need to kind of revise. And this is a little slide when my colleagues put together. Um, and I feel like the bullets are really harsh, but then that's because we want to really, uh, really emphasize that all of this is normal. Research is an iterative process, right? You try a little bit, it doesn't work, you change it, you try a little bit different. Um, and, and at the same time that you're doing that, you're sort of clarifying your thinking. So research is, is exploratory um, and it's also, you know, internally you're kind of figuring out where you wanna go. So it is kind of a maze. Um, but there are some great tools to help you do that. Um, so there's out there in the world, tons of different kinds of resources, right? We're used to things like books um, or eBooks, um, print, printed articles, online articles, um, maybe encyclopedias, but there's a whole wealth of other types of information resources that we may or may not think of in that way like your Instagram feed is an information resource. Um, how are you going to put that to use? That depends on your project. So a lot of what we try to do is, you know, we ask you questions about your research project, and then we try to help you match the kind of resource that would work best. So let's say you need peer reviewed articles. Um, I will be right back. Okay. Um, who knew I muted my phone phone, but now I'm getting calls on my Zoom phone. This is new. All right. Um, so let me back up and ask you about peer review. Is that something that you've heard? You can give me a thumbs up or down or a yes or no. Um, is it something you'd like to know about? It's pretty important. So if you haven't heard it, um, let me know. Okay, I see a few people not yet. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to take it's not really a detour, I guess it's, um, it's sort of just like a side road. So um, you're gonna hear this a lot. And you're probably gonna use it a lot. Um, peer review. So let's say I'm a professor and um, I'm an expert in my field, because that's generally what professors are, where they're becoming experts in their field. And I write an article and I want to submit it to an academic, a scholarly journal, and they have what's called um, a peer review process. So that means I submit it to them and they have a number of um, academics who are also experts in that same field and they will review my writing. And they will say, okay, this idea is solid, but you need to give us more information about the kinds of methods you used in your research, or this data point needs to be explained 
or um, you know, some of your language needs to be revised. And they send it back to me, I do that, I send it back to them and they go over it um, and they decide that it has reached um, the standard it needs to be at in order to be published in their, in their journal. And so that process exists because scholarship, um, you know, it's a continuing conversation. It builds on what has come before. Um, and it's in its essence, I think it's really collaborative. So yes, we do our own thinking and our own writing, but we don't invent things, right? We build on other people's ideas. Um, we allow those ideas to inspire us. So we have to acknowledge them. And so peer review is a, is a way to ensure that we're getting really high quality information, high quality scholarship. Um, and it's different from something like a regular, like a trade magazine article that you might find like in, um, in Time or The New Yorker um, because of the peer review process. So if you read something in Time, it's probably been written by an individual journalist submitted to an editor, maybe a fact checker, um, and they made some changes and then it's it's ready to be published. Peer review is a much more rigorous process. Um, and so when you're in the library database, you can actually search just peer reviewed articles. So did that make sense? I'm gonna check my participants list for yeses or nos or thumbs up or down. I see a thumbs up because I'm Happy to try and explain it or, or elaborate on certain aspects of it if it didn't make sense. And it's okay if you're not sure right now, you're welcome to ask a question about it as we go on. Okay, thank you. So lots of different types of resources and you'll want to think about the scope of your project, you know, what you want it to be and to say, and that will help drive what kind of resource you choose. Okay, so um, the cool thing about the library is that while there's all these different types of resources, there's one search tool you can use to search um, a vast majority of them. Obviously not everything, um, but we call it um, OneSearch because it is kind of cross-platform, um, but you can break it down if you're only looking for articles or only databases or what have you. Um, and so we'll go to that in just a second, I think. Yes, okay. Um, I'm gonna back out to the website, I think, real quick. And, okay. So the search all is what you'll see here, and that's what I was saying cross platform. Um, but let's say you only want articles, so you would select a tab um, and you only want peer reviewed articles, or you just want books and you only want ebooks. So just know that there's a certain level of customization that you can do here. Um, and then also know that even though we are, the library is closed, um, we are allowed to have. A, the limited number of staff there um, to pull physical books or physical items, DVDs, CDs, books. Um, so you can request something and you can use the dome side pickup service um, to get that. And so there's a process where you sign in, you request the book, we pull it off the shelf, we email you, it's ready, you can come get it. Um, so just know that that service is still available to you. And you can see this little um, chat widget here that says ask us. This will look like that most of the time, but it will pop out to you um, and you can just hop on. So we staff this with SDSU librarians Monday through Friday from about 9 to 7 p.m. And then um, nights and weekends, it's staffed by a global cooperative of librarians. So librarians at universities around the world. Um, and they, you know, they do what I do, but at their university. So they're pretty familiar with getting around um, an academic library website and, and they can help answer most of your questions. Okay, so I'm gonna close this guy. Okay, so I've been talking for a long time. Does anybody have questions? Okay, 
So um, I believe from what your professor told me that you're looking at um, in what ways does diversity affect liter literacy education? Does that ring a bell? I hope I was reading the right email. Um, and also what it means to be an American. So, um, and it sounds like you're kind of looking at this in some different contexts in your, in your smaller groups. So I thought we could do some searching to kind of, so you can kind of get a sense of how the searching works, focused on what it is to be an American. Okay. Okay, so does anybody have something that they would like to try a search on? If not, I have something, but I wanted to ask you all first. My group is working on, whoops, hold on. Um, my group is working on the opioid epidemic or like the okay. opioid problem mm -hmm. in America. So in like healthcare. Okay, in healthcare, okay. Let's see. So let's try. Um, one of the things I like to do first is just a big, broad search. So let's do. Oh, I hope I can spell this right. <laughs> OK, so you can see I'm just going to do this in the big old search all box. So I thought I was. Um, and I'm going to use the phrase opioid epidemic because it seems like that's that's what uh, is pretty commonly used. Um, and once I search, I, I end up on this page from the homepage you go here. We call this the bento page because of all the little boxes. So sometimes you might go get um, a bento box lunch and you, your food comes in little sections of the tray, right? So that's why we call it that. But um, the boxes are broken out by format or um, yeah, mostly format. So if there were a research guide, which is kind of a how-to guide with links to um, resources, it would show up here. Um, and that's not to say that there isn't one that would be useful in this context, but um, it's not called opioid epidemic. So all formats is everything, books, um, journal articles, uh, streaming media, and you can see 87,603 results. You keep going, then it breaks it out more. Journal articles, and you can look at all of them, or you can just look at peer reviewed um, and also books. So for right now, what I'm gonna do is look at all formats because I wanna show you the filters. So we go here. So it's just like when you do online shopping, there's filtering by color, by brand, by size, same thing here, it's on the left-hand side. And you know, let's say, well, I'm not gonna be going to the San Diego anytime soon or the library, so it has to be available online. Um, I want it to be, let's say I want it to be just a book chapter and then you can apply your filters. So then you're essentially looking at eBooks um, where we've cataloged separate chapters. And I'm gonna say no thanks to the chat because I am the librarian who's online. Um, okay. So the nice thing about a chapter is, you know, you might just wanna read the introduction of a book or you might wanna read um, a specific section of it. You don't want the whole thing. And so um, I, I really like that particular format because you can just pull something out. So that narrowed from 87,000 to 305. Um, now, if I saw things here that I liked, but I wasn't sure I was ready to check out, I could sign in um, and save them in a list for later. So you would sign in up here and it's gonna ask you for your SDSU ID, which I'm gonna attempt to type in. Okay, so now I'm signed in, we can see it's me. And I can look at things I've saved before. I can save search histories as I'm going along. Um, or I can say, I can also email things to myself. So like, let's say I'm really interested in this one. I could mark a few items and save them or I could just go here and it will automatically add it. I could email it to myself. Um, and if you, if you just want it as a reference, I would say just um, send yourself like the citation. Um, if you're fancy in using some of these citation services, that's a little different, but probably you can just do one of these guys, permalink or citation. Okay, 
and I'm gonna get out of there. So let's say I actually, what I really actually need is a peer reviewed article. Um, I'm going to get rid of my filters by resetting them. And now I am back to my, back to 38,000 results, which I think hmm, it's a little different. Um, but I can do here peer review journals and that's really gonna cut that down. But let's say that there, it's a little too broad right now. Um, I wanna narrow this down to healthcare. So let's say, let's add something here. So now what I'm doing is combining, um, combining terms. And I want it to work as a phrase. So if you want something, if you want the database to search for something as a distinct phrase, or as a phrase instead of two distinct words, then put quotes around it like that. And this is still um, pretty broad in the sense that I'm asking it just to look anywhere. I think this is, unless you know exactly the subject, this is probably your best bet. Leave it as any field and contains and the same here and then run your search. And let's see what happens. So now I'm looking at 7,065 results. Um, and you can see here's an article and full text available. So it's available online. Uh, here's a book also online. Um, are there any, I wanna see if there's a print book so that you would see. Let's, if you wanted a print book, you would say available in the library, but look, I'm not seeing any right now. So that's okay. Um, I can show you that in a sec. Another thing I wanna tell you here is that you're only gonna see 10 results at a time, but that doesn't mean there's only 10. If you look at the very bottom, there's a link to load more results. Um, it's, it's not impossible or an unheard of, of course, but it's probably pretty rare that you're gonna find um, enough in your first 10 results. So do make sure that, that you load some more and kind of take more time uh, looking through the items. And then if let's say you were looking for newspapers, that would be a different search, but I'm not going to go down that road right now. Um, so uh, Christopher, were any of the titles you saw in any of those searches, did they look interesting? Um, yeah, the one like actually at the very top, I think, huh? was huh? interesting just because like it sort of very directly relates to drug usage and healthcare problems. So yeah. it's very fitting to what I was going for. Cool. Um, so that's always nice, you know, when your terms come, uh, your terms work just kind of the way you want to. Um, the other thing about this is it's open access uh, and you'll see it's got a little like unlocked thing. And that just means that you probably, you may not be asked to sign in because um, it's not part of a subscription database. Most of the articles that you'll see in, uh, in the, the library catalog are, we get them through a subscription and that means we pay for them. And so you, you won't need to pay for them as long as you access them through the library. Um, but just know that, that that's, there's a difference with open access. So if I wanted to then read this, I would click on the link to, to that. Let me go back a second. I'm gonna move this, let me go back here, okay. So whenever you're ready to access something, look for a link. <laughs> so it's gonna be either here, or let's say it was a print item, it would say sign in for more options. Um, but here my full text is available at this particular link. So when I click that, then I'm asked to authenticate. And this time it's probably because this is just part of a, part of a different database. So then we sign in and we wait for it to load. Okay, so this particular database, this is the vendor up here, ProQuest, and it's our, our version of it. Um, and you're gonna, every database has kind of a different interface, but most of the time they'll have the same options. And that's over here on the right. You can download a PDF, you can send yourself the citation, email yourself the whole thing, um, print it out, with ebooks, you'll often get um, 
a choice to either check it out for a certain amount of time after which it returns itself or to download uh, a certain amount of pages. So they have different page limits depending on the subscription, but you may be able to get 80 or 100 at a time and then need to wait for the next day. Um, and so often you just need a chapter and you can just download that. But with an article, you're gonna see all sorts of good information. You'll see the title, um, you'll see the authors, the name of the journal it's published in, the publication, place, and then volume and issue number. Sometimes it'll be volume and number, but you know, essentially one year is, a, is the volume and then um, that may break down into various issues. So this one looks like it has at least 13 issues for that year. And then an abstract will give you kind of a summary. I was gonna say quick, but sometimes they're really long <laughs> and then you get the full text. Um, any questions about um, articles, kind of how they, how they work, how they look? I'm gonna open my chat. Okay. Okay, so let's go back over here. And let's say, um, let's say you want to do a search about, um, uh, like different cultural experiences, right? Um, so what are some terms that you might use? Does anybody have a, have a thought? I'm gonna try, let's see. Oops, I've got my chat window over my screen, so. And I will tell you this search by cultural Americans is kind of broad. I'm really not sure what it's going to give me. Interesting. Okay. So fi about 5,000 results, but I'm really interested in journal articles. So let me look and see what's there. And I'm going to limit those to peer reviewed. Hmm. Okay, here's some different kinds of things. I'm not sure if I really like these. Um, I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna say cultural experience as a phrase and United States. Because America or Americans could be anywhere in the Americas, right? So let's see what happens there. Okay, so now I'm seeing some different things. I feel like I've seen this article before. Um, now I'm starting to see contexts. Okay. So then what I would do is I would go through this list and um, I might even click into a journal article and I'd kind of skim it um, or to read it, read the whole thing. I mean, you don't, don't pressure yourself. <laughs> um, and Either I'd say, yes, this is what I want, or no, this is not exactly what I want. I need it to, I need it to cover more of these kinds of topics. So then I might start writing out different key terms that I want to use to kind of switch up my, my search. So I'm going to go back to my slides because um, I want to share with you this particular slide that one of another one of my colleagues made, which I think is really good. Um, so a big part of the battle when you're searching, doing research is, are your search terms? Because um, you're trying to get at a specific thing. And sometimes you know what that is, like opioid epidemic, I think was really precise. Sometimes not so much. Um, if we want to talk about how culture impacts our healthcare, um, those are two kind of nebulous ideas. So we might need to think through that. So things that work well are those single words or short phrases, proper names. You know, if you if you type Abraham Lincoln into a database, it's going to know who you mean, probably, um, and like locations. Things that are don't work quite as well is like a complete sentence. So you know how you can put into Google, um, how do I do this? That works um, out on the open web. 
and it's built for that, which is pretty cool. Although sometimes you get a lot of crazy random results. That doesn't really work in um, more academic databases. You need to be uh, a little more strategic in what you ask it to look for. Um, value words also don't work super great. So let's say um, uh, inequity in healthcare is bad. So while I think we can all agree on that statement, um, is bad doesn't really tell the database what to look for. You're making a value judgment. Instead, you want to think more about the impact of inequity in healthcare. So inequity in healthcare um, leads to uh, like higher death rate or leads to financial loss. Um, so thinking more about the impact of that. And that's where that, that last item relationship words comes in. Did that make sense? People think, thank you, I'm seeing, I'm seeing some nodding. I appreciate that. Um, okay. All right, and remember searching can be messy. <laughs> okay, it's, uh, it's exploratory. You have some strategy. Um, it's an expedition, right? As opposed to when just a random adventure you're having, but you, you are gonna have to refine it. It's probably not gonna work right 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 out of the gate um so i did talk about uh these guys so i don't think you need to see that but let me ask you if you have questions i've been talking at you for like 30 minutes so um and or aaron if there's some something you'd like me to cover that i have not covered A couple of things that might be good to cover are um, how to choose citations, um, the strengths of using library citations. Oh, yes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, when you're, uh, depending what your project is, you're going to choose your source. So let's say you choose, um, you're doing, uh, exploring the opioid epidemic on um, healthcare. So probably you're going to want um, scholarly analyses about this, about this issue, this dynamic. Um, and so that's, that's why you would uh, work in the library because you know that scholarly articles have gone through that peer review process. Um, you know that if they did interviews with um, human subjects, that they were conducted ethically, that they were thorough, um, that they had a research plan, and so, and so their like their data is more reliable, and their conclusions are um, they are I don't want to just say better, but um, they're more authoritative than if you were just to talk to um, your friends and what your friends maybe have heard anecdotally in the news. Um, academic research has a a foundation, right, of, of research trial and error um, and also of expertise. Um, and so that's, that's one of the big reasons why you want to use these. Um, and also because this is how you participate in that scholarly conversation. You know, you learn what other scholars have been saying um, and that helps to inform your own thinking. Um, and then you contribute to that scholarly conversation. Um, and, and it's a, you you need to what am I trying to say? Uh, it's data based, right? So you have to have evidence for your argument, and that's what a scholarly article is going to do as well. So that's a, a much better resource than than just pulling something off of like like a Facebook feed potentially. Not that I want to discriminate against Facebook feeds, but um, this information will have been vetted, uh, which is very different. Um, and then, and then also, you know, you want to know, you want to think about um, what are you trying to find out? Do you just need background information on something? If you just want to kind of get up to speed, you're going to want something like an encyclopedia or a reference item. Um, but if you want to know what people are thinking about something, then you would want something like a book, which is uh, in, in this context would be called a scholarly monograph because mono means one, it focuses on one topic. Um, or you'd want an article because an article is really going to like 
the article is going to dig into one one little area of an issue and really explore it and provide evidence for it. Um, and then you want to start your research at the library, even if you want to use Google Scholar, because we have um, access to resources for you for free that if you found them out on the web, you would need to pay for. So having said that, I want to show you uh, one of our research guides. So we have all these guides to help you along the way. Um, and we even have one for Google Scholar. So if you wanted to be to do some searching in Google Scholar, you'd want to start here because then it's going to link back to our database. Um, and it'll just make it that much easier for you to access an article. And I realized I got I went through that kind of fast. So let me go back. So research guides, you can find them right on the homepage. Um, you can also find them up in this menu. And they're basically guides that um, subject specialist librarians have put together for you on all kinds of different topics. Some are for specific classes, um, some are just by discipline. And so let's say you want to look at, let's pick one. Um, oh, this is a good one. So um, this how-to research tutorials, it looks like a lot, but it's kind of step-by-step. Step. Um, if you're feeling like you want to try a lot of this searching out for yourself and before you really dive in, this is a good research guide um, because it will tell you about how to use library resources. Um, it will tell you what peer-reviewed articles are, um, how to access different kinds of things. So that is a handy one. And I'm very happy to email that um, to Erin if you like later so you can have it. Um, and then let's go back here. Let's say you're looking at, um, let's say, ooh, ooh, I want one of the health sciences. That's why I'm hopping around. Um, here we go. Let's say you're studying nursing. So something like nursing will have specific kinds of resources. So starting at this research guide will kind of cut out some, uh, some frustration because you'll know, oh, I can go to PubMed or I can go to APA Psych Info. Um, and these are databases that um, focus on things or articles in the health sciences, right? Or data in the health sciences. So instead of searching everything, you're now searching your subject. And I think this could be very useful, even for something like something like the opioid epidemic in healthcare. Using PubMed, which is actually a um, this is a government site, so it's it's free and uh, and open. But you could search this here and get all sorts of opioid let's do addiction. Now keep in mind these will be very um, very medical in nature, very expert, um, but they could prove to be useful. So that was research guides, research by subject. Um, and then we also have databases all in one list and it's searchable. So let's say you're doing a project on the environment and you just, you just wanna search articles on the environment. So you could go here. So this is the, the full list of all of the research databases that we subscribe to. And what I'm doing is searching it for things that are focused on the environment. Or maybe let's try climate change and see what happens. Okay, so climate change is both, um, it is, is kind of an issue, right? Obviously there's science to it, but it affects um, lots of different disciplines. So global issues library, environmental studies, um, those are two databases that could be very useful. You may say, well, I need more than that. So you could do environment and now you have lots more to choose from. So it's a lot of information <laughs> um, that I just threw at you. Erin, did that address your question? Not question, but um, about choosing a good, a good resource? Yeah, I think it did. Thank you. 
course, of course. Um, it's very easy for me to get off track and just be like, oh, and we have this and we have this. Um, but I want it to be useful for you all. Okay, so let's do a quick poll. Um, do you feel at this point that, um, and you can do a yes or no in the participants list, that you could start searching for your, your project? You could start doing some research in the library. I see a green, yes, and some yes, okay. Excellent. Would you like to try it and I can hang out for a few minutes? I mean, it's 1.46, so I know there's probably not a lot of time. <laughs> and you know, I always forget to tell you all this at the start of class. Um, you can use this on your phone too. If you're on, and I always mean to tell people, if, if you're on your laptop, you know, and you wanna use your phone, it works pretty well and you can follow along, um, but I know you all got it. Uh, Yes, you don't have to be, uh, okay. Okay, so I was just looking at my list. Okay, I'm sure I've forgotten something, but that's what I have. <laughs> Let me just show you this at the end. Okay, so we are here to help. Um, that's our little Brady Bunch picture. And um, we also try to put some fun, but semi-educational content out on Instagram. So, um, you know, if you're not averse to that, we're at sdsu.librarians and we try to have fun, but we are on chat all the time. So if you remember nothing else, just remember that you can come and ask us any question on chat. Um, and uh, it also works on SMS and email or you can leave us a voicemail. We want to help you. And I think that's all I have. Thank you, Mara. Um, for the all of you who, uh, you know, like we're almost done with class, we've only got three more minutes to go. I wanted to say um, thank you to Mara. And I also wanted to say, um, go ahead, start playing around. You know, you know that we're, our big picture research is what does it mean to be American? What should America be? What is America now? And so we're looking at it through the lens of the opioid crisis or um, inequities, um, racial problems in America or the environmental crisis because those are all things that reflect America. So start thinking about questions, asking questions, doing some initial research as I come across articles in the newspaper and in magazines, I'll share them with you. I already shared something with the diversity groups. Um, final questions before we close out the class. Um, I actually had a question, but it was like a personal one. Um, can I do that after class or? Yeah, definitely. I'll stick around, Alexis. Okay, thank you. Okay. I, I will then take this moment to say goodbye and thank you so much. And I hope I get to see you all once we're all back on campus. Awesome. Thank you, Mara. Thank you.